Hey, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how Hashimoto's affects sexual function in women and depression. But we're going to be talking about euthyroid Hashimoto's. Now, that's the type of Hashimoto's where you just have the antibodies. Because we've already known that being overtly hypothyroid causes problems with sexual dysfunction and depression. But new research coming out of Finland confirms that all you have to have is the antibodies. So, let's get into it. To start... Uh, you thyroid Hashimoto's, what is that? Well, that's the Hashimoto's where all you have is the elevated antibodies, right? So either thyroid peroxidase is high or thyroglobulin antibodies are high or both. And remember, there's kind of a, there's like a spectrum, right? There's you thyroid Hashimoto's and that you thyroid basically means true thyroid. It means your TSH isn't high, your T4 isn't low. But then you could progress to subclinical where your TSH is high uh, and your T4s not uh, abnormal, until overtly hypothyroid, where your TSH is high and your T4 is low. Now, we've already known for a long time that being hypothyroid, and remember, Hashimoto's is the number one cause of hypothyroidism, that being hypothyroid certainly causes problems with sexual function. But what I've seen over the last 20 years uh, with the patients I've seen is that all you have to have is the antibodies to start to feel bad. You don't have to have alterations in your TSH. You don't have to be overtly hypothyroid. And I've, again, I've seen that for a long time. And you know, new research is coming out every month to kind of confirm uh, what I've seen kind of practically in my own patients for the last couple of decades. Now, this research came out of Finland. And basically what they did is they looked at 116 women age 18 to 45 who'd been diagnosed with Hashimoto's in the previous six months, uh, but had not been getting treated with hormones, and they were euthyroid, meaning their TSH wasn't high, the T4 wasn't low. And what they did is they uh, looked at this with what they, a, a little index, a little kind of a survey called a female sexual function uh, index. And it's kind of a 19 item like survey, and it breaks sexual function down into different domains, like desire, arousal, uh, lubrication, orgasm, pain, and sexual satisfaction. And to kind of cut to the chase, what they found by analyzing the results uh, of these women that are euthyroid, okay, euthyroid Hashimoto's, they found that women that have euthyroid Hashimoto's compared to healthy peers, they found they had a lower total uh, female sexual function index score, and then lower scores in the following domains, arousal, uh, desire, lubrication, and satisfaction. Now, there was a little side note there. They found that their score was directly correlated to how high their antibody levels were, which means the higher your antibody levels were, the worse your scores were on this. Now, there were a couple other correlations that they found are very, very helpful and interesting for us. Uh, one, they found that the level of high sensitivity C-reactive protein, which is a general inflammation marker, was related to how high your thyroid antibodies were. And they found that your score on your female sexual function index test, like the worst that was, the worse your, the higher your HSCRP levels were. Now, what that, what they conclude, and what makes sense is that that female sexual function uh, problem that euthyroid Hashimoto's cause is most likely secondary to systemic inflammation. Right? This is extremely, extremely important because what they're saying is, is that women with Hashimoto's, even not overtly hypothyroid Hashimoto's, have an inflammatory problem. And one of the ways that it can make you feel bad and make you feel terrible, even though your numbers aren't abnormal, is uh, in your sexual function, arousal, desire, th those kind of things. Now, I alluded to depression a minute ago, and what they found is, is that euthyroid Hashimoto's is related to depression, which is not a big deal because we've known that for a long time as well. Now, the thing, the really, really, really important thing about this means that you don't have to have a high TSH and a low T4 to feel bad. All you have to have is elevated thyroid peroxidase antibodies or elevated thyroid glycol antibodies. The immune system abnormality that causes that is enough to make you feel bad. So you don't have to wait until you're overtly hypothyroid. But that's the problem, right? The problem is, is that if you feel bad, and you go in and you go see your doctor, they might run a TSH and a free T4, and if those are normal, that's it. They're not checking anything else. Now, these authors make a great point. I'm gonna pull it up here. They quote and they say, all women with sexual dysfunction of unknown origin should be assessed for the presence of autoimmune thyroid disease, even if TSH and free thyroid hormone levels are within normal limits. Absolutely. 
but that is going to be difficult to find in the kind of insurance model. Uh, what it really means is you're going to have to work with someone that is up to date, that knows about this information, and knows that all you have to have is the antibodies to have a problem. You don't have to be overtly hypothyroid. Now, I just got to be honest, I think that's going to be difficult to find. In fact, I know it's difficult to find. I see people all the time that aren't finding it. So you got to work with someone that, number one, knows, hey, you could have Hashimoto's. We should check you. It's not that expensive. Let's just find out if you've got it. I mean, millions of people have got Hashimoto's. It's the number one cause of hypothyroidism. It's the most uh, uh, common organ-specific autoimmune disease. And you know that point I made about inflammation a minute ago? You gotta make sure you're working with a doctor that understands about that inflammation because, you know, when you go to the endocrinologist and they give you levothyroxine or whatever, they're not doing anything for systemic inflammation. Like, that's not what they're doing. They're just replacing the hormones that you can't make. And that probably needs to be done if you're overtly hypothyroid. But when you're in euthyroid Hashimoto's, they're basically going to say, well, come back in a year and we'll see. And when you're hypothyroid, because we didn't do anything, uh, then we'll give you medication. But you don't have to do that, right? You don't have to wait and get worse until they finally give you medication and hope that that, and hope that, that works. And even then, even then, when you transition from euthyroid to fully hypothyroid, even then when you take the medication as directed, they really only ever manage your TSH. When your TSH is normal, then you're normal. And anything that's left, you must be depressed, right? Or they send you to some other specialist. So I don't mean to rant, but this study is really important for me uh, because I've been seeing this for 20 years. And here we have a really uh, important study saying all you have to have is the antibodies. So make sure, please make sure you're working with someone that knows, number one, what tests need to be ordered, how to interpret those tests, and what do you do about it? Because there's a lot of things you can do for systemic inflammation. There's a lot of things you can do for uh, lowering antibody levels, but only <laughs> if you know that's what you need to be doing. So I like to do, uh, you know, a lymphocyte immunophenotyping. I like to do tissue antibody testing. There's a lot of things we like to do please make sure you're working with someone because you don't need to wait to become overtly hypothyroid. You don't need to suffer because it takes seven to 10 years to get diagnosed Hashimoto's. The tests are not expensive, right? Someone's just got to be willing to know, has to be willing to do the test, know how to interpret the test. So um, I know today might have been a sensitive topic, but you know, sexual function's a part of us. It's part of being human. And what this study shows is that if you're suffering, find answers. Look for someone that can help you find those. Okay, see you next time.